Hello, I'm Calm. Thanks for clicking play. In this video, I would like to go through the standard keyboard layout and what purpose each key has on a keyboard. I've been using computers for a while and I've learned a few things making this. Well, where to start? Let's concentrate on the main part of the keyboard to begin with. So, similarly to a typewriter, we have the basic letters in the middle main part of the keyboard. You can press any of these keys to display the corresponding letters on the screen. If you hold the key down, then multiples of the character will display on screen until depressed. It's the same process with the number keys. These are above the letters ascending left to right. Yes, I did say this was basic to start with. The space bar, which creates a single character space when pressed, is below the letters. The punctuation symbol keys are mainly to the right of the letters, but there are some exceptions. You will notice these punctuation keys along with the number keys have an additional punctuation or symbol above them. If you press any of these keys the lower symbol or character will be selected. To activate the higher symbol or character we can do this by holding down the shift key and then pressing the same key to activate the higher symbol or character. The same applies to the characters above the numbers. Going back to the letters, if you wish to have lowercase or capital letters, you can press the caps lock key to scroll between these two options. Usually a light towards the top right hand of the keyboard will light up or go off when pressed to signify this. Alternatively, if you wish to just have one capital letter, say to start a sentence, you can just hold down the shift key and press the desired letter or letters. The caps locks key however doesn't affect any of the other keys, only the letters, hence caps lock, capital lock. We have other modifier keys that add extra functions to keys in the same way as the caps lock and shift key, i.e. when you hold them down and select certain keys or combination of keys they add an extra function to that key. These additional keys which we will talk about a little bit later on are CTRL which is control, ALT, which is alt or alternate, and the Windows icon key. I have to reiterate, this can get a little involved and there are no indications on the keyboard to their abilities. So we'll come back to these ones or I will do a separate video. Otherwise, I will divert too much of today's subject. I will, however, give a brief overview of the other modifier key, the FNE. Phenomena do do the FN key. Let's call this function for now. This key has a direct link to the F keys that are arranged numerically at the top of the keyboard F1 to F12. These F keys have their own different types of abilities, such as if you've got an open window when you press F5, this will refresh that pane. The F keys in particular make more sense when you are actually using applications. For example, in most applications, if you press F1, it opens a help screen or help menu screen. So, on my keyboard, these F keys are displayed at the top of the key. But unlike the number keys where the bottom symbol takes preference, this is reversed. And they are the priority function on this keyboard when pressed. However, if I hold down the F FN key, and then press the F key, the function of the key changes. For example, if I press and hold the FN key down and press the F2, it turns my speaker volume down by one, one per key press. If I alternate this with the F3 key, this turns my speakers back up on one per key press. This will not be the same on every keyboard as these additional features will vary keyboard to keyboard. You will have to just explore the keyboard you are using. Usually there will be a picture on the key to try and explain what the function is. Or you could refer to the manual to see what these keys are programmed to do. Also, sometimes the scenario is reversed. As you can see on this keyboard, the FN key is color coded. So to select the F1 to F12 keys on this keyboard, you need to actually hold down the FN key and then press the key that you require. So in this instance, it makes more sense why the, fn, the FN key could be short for function. Right, moving on, the ESC key, which is to the top left of the keyboard, is short for escape. This stops or leaves the current task. 
The tab key, which can sometimes just be symbolized as two long arrows, one running left, the other running right, which is situated a couple of keys below the escape button. When pressed, this moves the cursor forward to the next space or work area. Backspace, or a form of the single long arrow going right to left. As you can guess, this moves the cursor back one space, but actually deletes the character that is there, or was there after you press it. Not many of the main keys left now, and to be honest, I'm learning here myself. There's some keys I've never used, and these keys are to the bottom right hand side of the main keyboard. We have an additional ALT, or on some keyboards, Alt GR, and another control key. Originally, I thought these keys have the same function and are the same keys but just repeated to make it easier for right and left handed people to use. But it turns out the right hand Alt or Alt GR key is for unlocking extra characters, mainly notations for other languages. I also think it has operations to do with Linux. Anyway, in the same area we have a strange icon looking key on the keyboard. It's supposed to represent a screen with a pointer. Again, I have never used this key until now, but it acts the same as a right click on a mouse, i.e. it brings up a menu screen. If you are wondering what a mouse has to do with computers, that will have to be another next tips video. Lastly, on the main part we have the enter key, which on some keyboards instead of stating enter, it is just symbolised by a long arrow going from right to left, but with a part vertical line at the start of the arrow. This is still an affirmative key, or to start the next line when typing. Right, we'll look at what I like to call the secondary part of the keyboard now, or mainly manual part of the keyboard I feel. Most of these keys are what I would call old school, and by that I mean these keys are hardly used by most since the introduction of Windows, except in specific things like editing text but they do come in very handy if you haven't got a mouse or an equivalent. I'm not saying that these keys are redundant now by any means, but some will hardly be used by most, except by certain people in certain areas of computing. The arrow keys or cursor keys, up, down, left, right, move the cursor one character in the direction selected. This is without deleting the character occupying that space. Like I mentioned, these keys are very handy to edit documents or lines of programming with the help of the additional modifier keys. For example, if I hold down the shift key whilst moving the cursor with the arrow keys, I can highlight a certain area. I can then manipulate this group of characters in one go. Say I hit the backspace key. All of that text has been deleted in one go. This isn't the only thing you can do with these highlighted areas but more to come on this later or a separate video. Also, if you have a window open, you can scroll up and down, left and right with these keys instead of using the scroll bars. Above these arrow keys, we have another group of buttons. I'll start with the delete key. This is the backspace key in reverse. Basically, it will delete one character to the right of the cursor when pressed. The insert key when pressed allows you to scroll between having the ability to insert text in between characters or deciding to overtype the characters to the right of the cursor. Home and end have similar attributes. If you press home, it will put the cursor at the beginning of the line and end places the cursor at the end of the line. Peg up and peg down, which sounds Scottish, stands for page up and page down. Pressing these will scroll up or down one screen's worth. Again, good for editing documents. Pause break, well, this goes back to the early days of computing when you would type a command in DOS or something similar like nowadays you've got the command line. These text-based control systems can display information on screen very quickly. The information requested by the command that you type in could display and whoosh past on screen very quickly and you won't get a chance to read it. If you press the pause break button, this would actually pause and resume this information being displayed so it gives you a chance to read it. Don't worry if you didn't understand this, for the majority this key will never be used. Scroll lock, similar to pause break, hardly used anymore since things have moved on from text based systems, but basically it will lock the page so that when you use the cursor keys the whole page will move up and down and left and right instead of just the cursor moving. 
For example, try this in Excel. This will give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. Now the PRTSC button is a very, very handy button nowadays. I think in the old days, if I remember correctly, it was used to dump what was displaying on screen direct to your printer, hence print screen. Nowadays though, it takes a picture or screenshot of what is displaying on your actual screen. You can then use this screenshot and paste it somewhere else, such like this. If you are eagle-eyed, you will notice that under the print screen button, there is also SysRQ. This function, I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, has something to do with sending a command directly to the system. If for whatever reason your computer is locked up or just stopped working, you can use this key to send a command to say, shut down the system safely. I think if there are any Linux users watching, you can confirm this, but I don't think you can actually use it within Windows 10 now. I'd guess the button would probably be system request maybe, I'm not sure. Only one part of the keyboard left, yes. Okay, so the last part of the keyboard, I will call this part the high level data entry part, or the number pad, as the numbers have the priority of use on this part. And as my description implies, if you have a lot of numerical data to enter, this part of the keyboard would definitely be worn out first. As you can see, all these keys are repeated keys from other parts of the keyboard. They've been grouped together for efficiency so that you can reach all these keys easily and quickly. All the numeric and basic mathematical equation signs are here along with the enter key, with the exception of an extra key, numlock. This is another modifier key which only relates to this area. The numbers have priority in this area, but some of the keys have additional functions like the cursor keys. Pressing numlock rotates between these two functions and again a light does illuminate to display that this feature is on. Well this took longer than I thought so I suppose I will follow up with a separate video on the modifier keys. Some people like to call these shortcuts or fast keys so I'm not sure what to call the video yet. I hope you like me have learned something. I have enjoyed this it's my second video but I will release this first as making my first video I was just learning and messing around to see whether I could actually make a video or not. Like most of the people on the planet I learn new things each day especially if we push ourselves. Firstly this is a hobby that who knows where it will take me. However I do get quite involved and thorough with my information. I am my worst critic which is why probably I will not be making videos each week but I promise when I do, they will be worth watching. I struggle to stay serious sometimes, and I put my thoughts up in text boxes or hide them, rather than diverting from the subject that I'm talking about. So if you miss these, you know what to do. So hopefully this will be a perk rather than an irritation, but that will be up to you to decide. Anyway, I'd appreciate it if you'd like this video, and of course, please subscribe for further content. And if you think someone else will benefit from this, please share it. My target is the mature person and the young, and anyone else in between who wish to learn and contribute. The next video for the modifier keys will be worth watching. Again, I am learning new skills without repeating myself too much. If you know someone who is just starting with computers, if you know somebody who is great with computers, please share as I would like to build a community of like-minded people who wish to share their knowledge. I wouldn't dare to pretend to know everything, so if you thought this was helpful, or if you think I missed something important out, or are there more keys on a standard keyboard, please leave a comment. If you think there's an area I can improve on, leave a suggestion like or dislike this video, share it, but most of all I hope you enjoyed and benefited from it. I'm calm, have a good morning, afternoon or good evening. Farewell till next time, see you later. <laughs>